In Shanghai, they built a really tall tower called the Shanghai Tower. People thought it would be amazing, but after it was finished in 2016, it mostly stayed empty. People were not happy, and they wondered why. The outside of the tower looks cool with lots of glass pieces, over 20,000 of them. They are all different shapes, so the tower looks a bit different depending on how you look at it. But some say this design is why the Shanghai Tower failed. Is that true? Let's explore together on superstructures and find out the real reason behind why the Shanghai Tower didn't do well. Shanghai Tower encountered numerous issues, with one major problem being its extremely low occupancy rate. There are various reasons behind this. The twisting glass design of the building, meant to balance wind loads, resulted in an impractical floor layout, causing tenants to pay for large sections of space that couldn't be used. As the tallest structure in China, Shanghai Tower reaches a staggering height of 632 meters above street level, boasting a total of 128 stories. When Shanghai Tower first opened to the public, it proudly features the world's second fastest vertical transport system, with elevators reaching speeds of up to 74 kilometers per hour. The construction site, once a driving range, was prepared for building in 2008 after clearing an ecological impact review. A groundbreaking celebration took place on November 29, 2008. The core of the building was gradually erected floor by floor using a repeating slip forming technique. By the end of December 2011, the substructure was completed, and the steel structure had risen above the 30th story. In the early weeks of 2012, cracks began to appear in the roadways around the building site. These cracks were attributed to ground collapse rather than the load of the structure itself, likely a result of extensive groundwater removal in the Shanghai region. On August 3, 2013, the building employees installed the structure's last structural beam. The chief architect of the project expressed that the completion of the Shanghai skyscraper it would stand as a remarkable reflection of history, the present moment, and China's unlimited future. The Shanghai Tower Company emphasized its commitment to providing high-quality corporate and retail space and contributing to the city's skyline and overall functionality of the district. By August 2014, the interior construction and electrical fitting inside the building were completed, and the facade was finalized shortly after. However, until June 2017, the skyscraper struggled to attract tenants due to the lack of necessary clearances from the city's fire department, preventing the issuance of authorized occupancy certificates. While approximately 60% of its commercial space had been occupied, only 30% of these occupants had actually moved in, leaving full stories of the skyscraper vacant. The floor plate efficiency of the structure was only 50% on certain levels, compared to 70% for a conventional skyscraper. The tower's highly promoted outer shell, designed to bring in natural light and reduce air conditioning expenses, meant that much of the floor space could not be effectively utilized. Additionally, significant water leaks occurred on several floors in 2020, causing extensive damage to computer equipment and office spaces. The tower stated that the situation had been resolved and a thorough investigation of the level where the leak started could be conducted. Some Chinese social media users criticized the water leakage, attributing it to perceived poor construction practices in the region. To address stability concerns and high winds, technicians used a crane to stack steel plates and install a 1,200-ton damper near the top of the structure. This computer-controlled damper surrounded by pistons adjusts its position to counteract the effects of strong winds. During typhoons, the pinnacle of the structure may sway up to 5 feet without the damper. The structure comprises nine cylindrical towers stacked on top of each other, totaling 128 levels, all enclosed by the interior layers of the tower's facade. Between these layers and the outermost bending layer, nine zones provide visitors with public spaces inside Shanghai Tower. Each of these zones features an atrium with cafes, gardens, commercial spaces, and breathtaking views of the city. The exterior of Shanghai Tower has two transparent tiers. And the base of the structure includes retail and entertainment areas. This double-layered transparent design is unique in architecture, as most structures have a single front made of highly reflective glass to prevent heat absorption. However, the Shanghai Tower's innovative approach eliminates the need for either layer to be opaque. The skyscraper has the capacity to host up to 16,000 people daily. The architects found inspiration in Shanghai's traditional small courtyards, reimagining them within a spiraling shape. 
Inside parks spread across the city. The building offers vertically arranged meeting areas. These revolutionary sky gardens set the structure apart from any other high-rise ever constructed. The Shanghai Tower provides a unique environment for work and living, emphasizing public spaces in placing stores, cafes, and other commercial facilities on the atrium floors. Despite not reaching the anticipated occupancy level, the tower's elevator system deserves acknowledgement, collaborating with professionals to build a high-performance core. Engineers designed a vertical system with four sky lobbies connected by high-speed elevators. Each lobby serves as a social hub for its section of the structure, complete with restaurants and conference facilities. These sky lobbies offer enough amenities that some employees may not feel the need to leave the skyscraper during the workday, saving money on elevator trips and conserving energy resources. Smaller zones are reached by individual elevators throughout the structure. The viewing platform deck at the top of the building is accessible by three high-speed elevators that reach up to 70 km per hour, the fastest speed ever achieved in a commercial skyscraper. Three firemen's elevators complement the high-speed shuttle elevators, significantly increasing passenger flow to the viewing platform during peak hours. In the event of a fire or other disaster, the shuttles are designed to evacuate people from specially built safety levels, positioned at regular intervals throughout the tower. Above all, the 128-story structure aims to be the world's greenest high-rise tower. The state celebrates the structure's LEED Platinum certification as evidence of China's expanding efforts towards sustainability. China's environmental record has historically been poor. The nation consumes over 45% of the world's coal resources and grapples with the consequences of decades of water pollution and excessive deforestation. Due to the world's most polluted air, causing up to 4,000 deaths daily, an increasingly frustrated public is calling for stronger government intervention. In response to concerns about smog-filled skies and congested roads affecting societal stability, the state has initiated forest restoration programs, removed thousands of vehicles from highways in places like Beijing, and invested heavily in green technologies. Currently, China leads the world as the largest renewable energy market, with more than double the capacity of the United States. At the pinnacle of the Shanghai Tower, 200 wind turbines contribute approximately 10% of the tower's power, representing some of the most visible sustainability initiatives. However, these turbines are just one element of the overall strategy to reduce energy consumption. The tower collects rainwater, recycles gray water, incorporates a hybrid heating and cooling system, and employs 40 additional energy-saving techniques. Designers assert that these measures reduce the skyscraper's annual carbon footprint by approximately 35,000 metric tons. Covered in a double layer of glass for natural air conditioning and ventilation, the property boasts a third of its area as green space accessible to guests, featuring a total of 24 sky gardens situated between the two layers. Currently, everyone is striving to meet the most rigorous green certification standards, and only the Shanghai skyscraper has achieved LEED Platinum for skyscraper construction. Many believe that a structure of this scale could not reach such a high level of sustainability. While the building stands as the sole skyscraper with LEED Platinum certification, it aligns with a growing trend where skyscrapers highlight their environmental features, responding to the increasing demand for responsible urban construction. Despite facing its fair share of construction challenges, visiting the Shanghai Tower would still be a rewarding experience. Upon entering the inner door, guests encounter the introductory room, featuring images, videos documenting the building's construction, schematics, and models introducing some of the world's tallest structures. Following the display in the introductory room, guests then line up for the high-speed elevators. As these elevators ascend, visitors are treated to breathtaking views of the metropolis and the magnificent river below. The panoramic scenes include historic sites with various architectural designs throughout the city. Prominent landmarks such as the Oriental Pearl Tower, long considered a symbol of present-day Shanghai, and the Jin Mao Tower, along with the Shanghai World Financial Center, offer spectacular views. These two skyscrapers were the tallest structures in the area before the Shanghai Tower's construction. Now, visitors can look down upon them. While there are telescopes near the windows, they are not free, so it's advisable to bring your own. Checking the weather is recommended for potential impacts on viewing, and visiting on a clear day is preferable for better clarity, as a foggy haze may obscure the view otherwise. 
Here it is, China's tallest buildings with all its positives and negatives. If you're ever in Shanghai, would you think about visiting this tower? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a like, share the video, and hit the notification bell for timely updates on our newest uploads. That wraps it up for Superstructures today. Until next time, thank you for watching!